What were you thinking? You are such a donkey. I can't believe you just did that. Unknown villain stays the same, someone you don't know. Average Joe, rec player. This is a weaker player that you might want to target. Usually the easiest you can play against. Old Man Coffee, a nit, someone who plays extremely tight and only bets when they got it. A lag, a loose aggressive player. These can be very dangerous or very profitable depending on the type. And of course the shark or the good reg. Kind of ones you have to watch out for. They know what they're doing. We sit down in one three game, buying for $500. Uh, we're sitting to the left of a very laggy player. He uh, likes to get involved in a lot of pots. And once he gets involved, he doesn't like to fold. So we're going to be tangled with him quite a bit since he's to our right. And uh, let's see how this first hand goes. There is one limper, the small blind completes. And I look down at ace jack from the big blind. Of course, Ace Jack makes good uh, good raising hand in this spot, so I make it 25, expecting them just to fold out. The first limper folds. The small blind continues for the $25, and the two of us head off to the flop, which comes out Queen 10 9 with two diamonds. Not a bad flop for my hand, and he checks quickly. I'm going to continue like I have something. I do have a straight draw and some backdoor flush draw. He puts in the quick call, and the two of us go off to the turn which is the Jack of Spades. Not a good card. Of course, it completes a straight to a king and to an eight and uh, kind of devalues our, our draw. But when he checks, I decided to try to represent a king. I figure if he has a smaller pair or maybe even the low end of the straight, he might let it go. If he has two pair, he might continue. But for the sizing of 75, he really shouldn't. Well... He seems to have something that he wants to continue with because he puts in the $75 and I'm going to probably surrender here. He seems a little sticky and I don't have too much. River card comes as a queen of spades. Pretty interesting. I can represent the flush draw now. I do have the ace of spades as a blocker, but a lot of his two pair just got counterfeited. So I think this is good just to check back and take our showdown value of have queens and jacks with an ace kicker. If he has something like Jack-10, 10, 10-9, 10, Jack-9, he gets counterfeited. But he shows us 8-7 for the low end of the straight. He's a pretty sticky player. The very next hand, I'm in the small blind. There's a limper. He raises over a small raise to 40. I put in the call. So does the other player. And uh, we go see a flop that comes king-7-6 with two diamonds. Uh, we got top pair with a weak kicker. I check. It ends up getting checked around. Okay, I think my king is good at this point. Turn card comes as a queen of clubs. I think I'll just check this and see if someone will stab at it again. Even though there's a flush draw in there, I don't think anyone has it. The initial raiser puts in a bet for $25. The re-raiser puts in a call for the 25. And now I can get value from a lot of their draws, whether it's a diamond draw, some sort of gut shot straight draw, or maybe they have a hand like a queen. I'm going to go for extra value. So I make it $125, making it a size that a queen might call and that if someone has something like jack 10 or diamonds, that they would definitely put some extra money in. First player puts in the call. I don't think he has a king. I think he has some sort of draw. The opponent on the button who was the uh, three better pre-flop, I'm guessing that he might have something like ace-queen. He thinks for a long time and decides to put in the call as well. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I need to dodge an ace and I need to dodge a diamond. So don't put up an ace of diamonds. It doesn't, it comes to two of hearts. So a complete blank. I got a little over $200 left in my stack. I figure this is a good time to get it all in. Maybe they put me on a missed draw. 
and call me down with a queen. First player folds quickly. Obviously he missed his draw. And now the player to my right is thinking a long time. Pretty sure he has a queen in his hand and he's thinking about calling me down. But after a long tank, he decides just to let it go and we win our first pot of the day. Our player to the right puts in a $6 strato. We looked at ace 10 suited, definitely good enough to raise. We make it $25. Everyone folds out and he puts in the 25 for making a call. Two of us heading off to a flop again, and this time it comes 10 high with one spade, 10 five deuce. Really good flop for our hand. He checks, I continue. He doesn't think too long before putting in the call. Turn card comes is a jack of spades. He quickly checks again. Here, I can go ahead and bet this, but I figure I was only gonna get two streets of value, so I decided to give him a free card. I'm not really worried about too much. The river card comes as a jack of clubs. If I was gonna pick a card that didn't actually make my hand, that would be it. If he has a jack, so be it. I'm gonna go for a little value. It might look like I'm betting something like uh, ace high or something, just trying to get him off a small pair. He goes in the tank for a little bit before deciding to make the call and look me up. I tell him that I actually have a 10 and uh, he says that's good by far. He said he had a five. All right, you guessed it, same guy, same opponent. We have queen jack of diamonds. Open for a raise to 20, only he puts in the call. So two of us are going heads up again to a flop. This time the flop comes ace high with absolutely nothing else for me but a back door straight and flush draw. He checks. I'm gonna fire, representing that I have an ace. He puts in a quick call. Turn card comes as an utter blank. I should probably give up at this point, but I've been having my way with him so far. I'm gonna continue betting. I've shown him a lot of strong hands. I decided to go again, this time for $65. He thinks a little longer on this one before making the call, but I don't think I like my hand too much. I don't think he's very strong. I think he probably has something like a pair of nines. I don't think he has an ace. And the ace comes on the river. Not the best card to bluff with. Uh, he's more likely I don't have an ace now. But I could have a lot of pocket pairs like queens, jacks, tens. So it's a little risky, but I decided to go for it. I bet out 150 trying to get him to fold his uh, nine or smaller pair. And he goes in the tank quite a bit. But he is um, someone who likes not to be bluffed. So I think I picked the wrong person to try to run this bluff through. And after some thought, he decides to put in the call. And I tell him that he's good. I show him my queen jack and he shows me that he had queen nine. So definitely don't try to bluff this guy, especially when the run out isn't scary enough. The very next hand I open for a raise with king queen suited to $15. I get a call from the player at the end of the table in the cutoff. It comes back around to the aggressive player in the small blind, and he makes it 75. Now this is concerning because, as I told you in the last vlog, every time I seem to have king-queen suited and I get played back at, somebody shows me aces. So that's in the back of my mind, but he is a wild and aggressive player, so I'm going to put in the call. And so does the player at the end of the table who is a little bit on the nitty side of things. Um, he does play pretty snug, so when he makes this call, I'm putting him on two big cards like myself, or more likely pocket pairs that will either flop a set or not. Anyway, the flop comes out king nine three, uh, rainbow. There are there is one club, not r one club. There is one club, so I have a backdoor straight and flush draw, and my opponent leads out for one hundred and fifteen dollars. Don't like this too much, but with top pair, second kicker, and some backdoor draws, I don't think I can let go of this just yet, so I decided to put in the call for the 115. The opponent at the other end of the table, he also decides to put in the call for the 115. When he does so, I'm thinking that he has a hand like King Jack, maybe King 10, well, not much else. Turn card comes as a three of hearts. Now the first player checks, he might be doing this as a trap with a hand like pocket aces. 
I'm going to be a little cautious. I decided to check this also, and it goes to the player at the end of the table who also checks. I figure if he had a three or pocket nines, he would definitely fire at that point. He might even bet some stronger kings. River card comes as a nine of spades. Don't really like that too much, but really, how does someone end up with a nine in this spot? I don't know. First player checks, I decided to go for some value. I think I can get called by maybe some smaller pocket pairs like queens, jacks, tens. Uh, if the player at the end of the table has something like king, jack, or king, ten, he might call down. Instead, he shoves all in. And, and then instantly I go, well, he must have a nine. He is a knit. He has a nine. Easy fold. And as the opponent to my right tanked, I realized that he probably has something like pocket aces and is now worried, like he checked as a trap. Anyway, he thinks for a while and ends up folding himself. And now it's me and the player at the other end of the table. And I go, how does he get there with a nine? I mean, what hands would he call a $75 bet pre-flop, $115 on the flop, and show up with a nine? I, you know, granted, he's a net. He has it all the time here. But how does he show up with a nine? I just couldn't put the pieces together. So I tanked for a long time. I think I'm beat, but he's not like a, a normal nit. I would say that he is uh, someone who's capable of making a move now and then. So I go, could he be making a move with a hand like King Jack, King Queen? Does he have to have a nine here? And what nine would he end up with? Ace, nine of hearts? Would he call 75 pre-flop and 115 on a flop with that? I don't know. There's enough doubt in my mind where I don't think I can just let this one go. So I decided to make a hero call, saying, thinking in my mind there's no way this guy gets there with a nine in his hand. And he shows me the nine eight of hearts. Nitty players always have it. Even if you don't understand how they got there, it's not worth calling them down. When in doubt, just fold. You'll get it back later. Just if you're curious, the player who folded that I thought might have pocket aces, he did have ace-king. So he had me crushed. No matter what I did on that hand, I was going to lose some serious money. Needless to say, I'm a little embarrassed and steamed at myself for punting off my last $320 to this player who obviously would only bet a nine in that spot. Uh, even though I don't understand how he got there, I should just let it go like Zeus said and move on to the next hand. And this next hand occurs when I'm in the big blind and I have Jack-10 offsuit. A strong player opens from plus one. He's probably the strongest player at the table. It's pulled back around to our friend to our right who puts in the call for the $25. And here, I should probably just let this one go. But as I said, I'm a little bit steamed, so I'm gonna continue with the call. And we're going to go three ways to a flop. With comes King Jack Seven with two diamonds. First player checks. I check, and the player behind checks. If he would have bet, I'll probably just let my hand go. Now, if five of hearts comes on the turn, and our friend to our right decides to bet for forty dollars, definitely can't throw away second pair with a decent kicker. So I put in the call, and so does the player behind. We see a river card of a three of spades. Our opponent to our right decides to size up a little bit and announces a bet of $90. Okay, he could have me beat. He can have a jack with a better kicker. He can have some sort of two pair. He can even have a king here. As I said, he can have a lot of things, but I don't think I can fold to him. So I put in the call for the 90 and he says, you win. And he shows me three deuce offsuit. So he made a pair of threes on the river, drawn completely dead, was just trying to run a bluff. The player to our right makes it a live 26. I look down at ace 10 suited. Got to be putting in a raise here. I make it 75. It's folded around to him and he puts in the quick call for the 75. And the two of us are battling again heads up to a flop which comes out 985 with one club. I got two overs, some backdoor straight draws and a backdoor flush draw. I check it back when he checks to me. Turn card comes as a five. I think I might be best, but I'm going to just check it back. River card comes as a 10. We make a pair. Let's go for it. Let's get some value out of him. 
Decided to stick in the bet. If he has just about anything I figured he would call. He doesn't wait too long. I show him the 10 and he made a pair of 10s on the river also. And of course we have him out kicked. There's a six dollar straddle on this hand and the player in the uh, small blind ends up putting in the call. I look down at ace king offsuit, put in the race to 40. Everyone folds except for the player in the small blind across, of course, who puts in the call. Flop comes out, jack 10 blank. We got two over cards, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush draw. I'm going to continue for $50. He does not think long at all before making the call. Yeah, I think he has something, probably a pair, and I don't think he's going anywhere. The eight of hearts comes on the turn. Really bad card for my range. Hits his range a lot harder. I decide just to check it back. Three of diamonds comes on the end. I think he's just waiting for me to make a bluff. He was. He had ace 10, and there was no way he was going to be folding that hand. A little while later, I'm on the button. He opens for a raise. I figure ace 10 offsuit is strong enough to put in a three bet, get it heads up with him. That's what I do. I make it 50. He calls and we head off to a flop with 107 in the pot. Flop comes out, eight, six, four. He checks, I am not going to fire. That hits his range pretty hard. Check it back, turn card comes as a 10. Good, we make top pair. Let's get some value. He's probably checking a hand such as a small pair, pocket pair. He calls, river card comes as a complete blank. He checks again. We're going to size up to mount that I think he would call with any pair and uh, hope he does. So I make it 120. As sticky as this player is, I can probably go larger. He tanks for a long time and he calls me what he told me later was a ace high hand. And uh, I totally believe him. So he puts in the call. We take it down with a pair of tens. I'm within earshot of getting even. I'm in the cutoff with a hand known as the skinny. Uh, ben Deach made this hand pretty notorious and famous on his vlog. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I normally always come in with a raise when I'm coming in, but uh, with a three deuce suited, I'm just gonna limp along. It gets raised from the player on the button to $20. And here I'd probably just end up folding. It was just me and him, but we get a bunch of callers. So I decided why not? Let's just play the skinny from the cutoff for 20 bucks. We go five ways to a flop with $104 in. Looking for a good flop and we get 10, nine, six with two hearts. So we do got a flush draw, but it is a very small flush draw and it's a very coordinated board. So I think there's gonna be some action going in here. There's a straight possible. There's also a possibility someone can have something a better flush draw than myself. It gets checked around to the player on the button who puts out a bet for $50. End up getting two people call in front of me. So I'm a little concerned that one of them might have a better flush draw than myself, but I don't think I can let this go for $50. Uh, I'm getting like six to one odds on my call. So I stick it in. Hopefully we can hit a flush and maybe uh, we get runner runner two pair or something. Turn card comes is a five of diamonds. We now pick up a gutter to the sucker end of the straight, which I think would be okay. I don't think anyone has seven, eight here. Both players check. I check. See if the player on the button will continue, and he does, this time for $100. Now, he seems to be a little bit of a newer player, um, and his sizing, I notice, has been off most of the day. So I'm thinking that he's given me a pretty good price to draw at a flush. He has about another $280 behind after this. So if I make this call, I think I got the proper odds to do so. And then I got some extra money I think that he would uh, have a hard time getting away from if I do. So the other two players fold out and it's time for me to make my call. $100 seems to be a fair price. I stick it in and we go see a river card. Ten of hearts is a great river card. That means he couldn't have top pair in the flush draw because the ten of hearts is on the board now. So I'm pretty sure I've gotten beat unless he flops some sort of set. I shove all in. He doesn't think too long before snap calling. I show him my deuce three of hearts. He turns over king ten of diamonds. And we get to drag a $1,000 pot. 
That was the last interesting hand of the day, but uh, we got some bonus hands that happened the day before and the day before that. So here we go. The game's been going for about 10 minutes. I look down at five, six of spades from the middle position, putting a race to 15. I only get one call up from the player in the hijack. He seems to be like he's uh, interested in playing pots with me. I know he watches the vlog. Maybe he just wants to get on it. Flop comes out to 10 high with a four and a deuce. I do have a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. I bet for 20. He continues for the 20. Think he might have something like a 10, a flush draw. I make my straight with a three, but it also completes the obvious flush draw. I check it over to him. I think he will bet all his tens, all his flushes, and a few of his bluffs. Well, all his bluffs if he's really bluffing now. He bets 35, I put in the call. River card comes as a four of clubs. I expect him to bet all his flushes, all his tens, and all his bluffs. So I check it over to him, prepare to call down just about anything at this point. His attitude and body language changed from someone who is betting for like maybe to scare you out to someone who's hoping that you would call. So I think, did he somehow make a full house with this card? Did he have like pocket deuces and was worried about the flush? Or did he have something like four deuce, four three? I don't know. But the way I played this hand, I don't think I can fold it. I don't think he has a flush anymore. I think he might have a full house. But if he doesn't, I got him beat. I don't know. I'm a little confused. I put the money in. He shows eight four diamonds. Interesting hand. I guess he just wanted to mix it up with his uh, favorite vlogger. 8-4. So this game was playing very deep and I was running pretty poorly. Just totally card dead. I managed to be up $250 at this time when this hand took place. There's a $6 straddle like down at two aces. Open for 25. It's folded to the player in the cutoff who has been on a total heater all day long. He's up like $2,500. I think he's only in for five. He puts in the call and so does the initial straddler. So the three of us are gonna see this flop with $79 in the pot. Flop comes out pretty good for my hand. It comes queen, six, five, rainbow. Excellent flop for a pair of aces. We'll get action from someone with a queen. Player to my right checks, I check. Now the player in the cutoff decides to bet. He ends up betting for $40. The player to my right breaks off $40 and slides it on in. And here I have two options. I can either just flat and play this thing slow all the way through, or put in a race here and try to get extra value from the queen and deny equity for someone who's drawing, because most likely the player in the small blind or the, uh, the straddle, I should say, has some sort of drawing hand. Maybe a straight draw, like seven, eight, three, four, 7-4, who knows? So I decided to go for the raise. I make it one forty-five. dollars $105 more for the player at the end of the table, who I've played with quite a bit. If he had a hand like king-queen, queen-jack, I think he would just be calling down here, um, not wanting to fold top pair to me. But he does not want to put in the call, and he definitely doesn't want to fold. So you know what that means. Yes, that means he wants to raise. And he uh, starts uh, putting together a pretty good hefty stack and he slides it out and he uh, makes it $390. Ouch. Yeah, this does not look good. So what hands would he have in this spot that I would beat here? As I said, I don't think he would do this even with a hand as strong as ace-queen. And plus I got two aces blocking ace-queen. So most likely if he has top pair, it's king-queen or worse. Of course, he could also, I don't think he has pocket queens, he would have raised me pre-flop. So that leaves three possible hands. Either he has pocket sixes, pocket fives, or the rare six five suited. The player to my right tanks for a long time and ends up folding. I think his goal was just to price out the player that would be on the obvious draw because he's the most dangerous to him. If I have an overpair or ace-queen, something like that, he's not worried about my hand. 
So his raise is designed to get that person to fold, and they do. A lot of people will get sticky with a pair of aces here, but I just think I'm way, way behind. So for me, this is an easy fold. For some other players, they might consider, how can you possibly fold a pair of aces in this spot? Well, it's simple. You're just beat. You're just beat here all day long, every single day, when um, this player goes ahead and does what he does. So I fold. I'm uh, pretty sure he had pocket sixes or fives there. For the day, we were in $1,000. Of course, I had to dunk off my money to the uh, that player in that hand with the king, queen of clubs. Yeah, not too pleased about that. Bad, bad, bad play on my part. Probably should have just checked the river, but I went for thin value and it cost me. I was able to regain my composure fairly quickly and uh, start playing good poker. The game was pretty good. I had that uh, loose aggressive player on my right. We tangled all day long. And uh, he was a lot of fun to play with. Uh, and uh, he got me a few times and I got him a few times. So I think I got the better of him overall. I think that's uh, one of the benefits of having position on a player that is a loose aggressive player. You do get a little bit more information and that definitely helps out. Anyway, thank you for all your support. I appreciate you watching and making it to the end. And until next time, good luck at the tables and we'll see you back here soon.